So far we have seen uniform rectilinear motion and now we are going to move on to rectilinear motion with uniform or constant acceleration. Now it is not as restrictive as it might sound because it is still a common motion around us that any body that you let go of would fall under gravity and gravitational acceleration is a constant acceleration. So let us look at something in free fall. So here we have say a leaky faucet at the top of a high rise maybe you know a 12 story building or something and we are going to watch uh, the water drops as they come down. So let us set things in motion. Here we go. So you can see the water droplet coming down and uh, as it comes down we are also going to plot its position on the y axis against the time on the x axis. There is a little difference though. We will not take the standard unit like second for time but we will roughly measure time in half second intervals or to be precise this 0.45175 seconds and then you will observe something interesting. To help you see things more clearly I have two more windows open here which would uh, one would zoom on the displacement axis and the other on the time axis and let's watch it in slow motion. So our droplet has started and the first unit of time has elapsed and our drop has come down by one meter. Now let us see what happens at the end of the second interval here and the drop has come down to four meter mark. Then we go to the third interval and now we are on the nine meter mark and uh, at the fourth interval we are on the 16 meter mark. So I'm sure you must have guessed what happens next at the five unit time interval. It is at 25. Notice something? Well, these are all perfect squares, aren't they? So the next one is going to be 49 and 64 and so on. So this is an interesting observation that a body coming down with uniform acceleration is covering distances which are proportional to the square of the time. Let us generalize this observation for bodies with some initial velocity, say initial velocity u. And if we plot the velocity of such a body against time, then we would get a straight line like this because the velocity of the body will gradually build up as it accelerates. Then the area under this graph will give us the distance covered. Not just this graph but any velocity against time graph has the area under it as the distance covered. And this distance which is now in the shape of a trapezium can be split into two parts. Say this rectangle over here whose height is u and width is t will have an area of u into t. This is nothing but the distance the body would have covered even if it was not accelerating. Suppose it was moving uniformly, then it is just velocity into time. Then we have this triangle on top of that. This is some sort of a bonus that we get because of the acceleration, some additional distance. And this is in the form of triangle. So the area would be half base into height. Base is t. The height is at, the additional velocity that we have because of the acceleration. So this is that area. And if you open this bracket, simplify this, then you will see a t square appearing here, the square of time. And that is how the distance covered for a uniformly accelerated body gets proportional to the time square. If we plot that distance covered, then we would get a parabolic graph like this. And the full-fledged formula is here. That displacement is equal to S0, the initial displacement plus u into t initial velocity into time the distance you would have covered even without the acceleration plus the bonus at half a t squared.